Greetings all, it's the Devious Monkey. I went back into the settings on this Insta361R after doing the firmware update. Yesterday's video looked like crap. It looked like crap because uh, it had completely changed my settings after I did the firmware upgrade, and I didn't go in and change them or look at them prior to going out and filming. So it was changed to ultra wide and vivid, which looked like crap. The ultra wide, when I tried to correct it in Final Cut, I mean, it mostly corrected it, but then it made it look weird, and uh, there was really nothing I could do about the vivid colors. So everything was kind of psychedelic to me. Today, I'm on wide, which should have a normal fix in Final Cut, and also on standard color, which I think is just right. So I look a little bit better in all that green yesterday, including the green of my shirt, was just so overwhelming. What I've done is I've gone into Pleasure House Point, but I kind of went off the, the normal beaten path. Literally, there, there's a path over there, an actually paved walkway with street lamps and everything, and I walked off of that to come into here, and then I saw what I thought I had remembered over somewhere else, and that's these structures. So someone has built little sleeping cubby holes, so to speak, I guess. And it's very cool. Kind of odd, but very cool. And naturally, I'm not going to disturb them or go into them because I'm just not going to, but they're here. And this is what I remembered. I just remembered them in the wrong place. I also switched to my Sigma 85 1.4, which isn't doing me a whole hell of a lot of good here because anywhere that I could stand to take pictures of those, uh, I can't even get them all in. So now we're going to just sort of walk through the woods here until I get to a little bit more familiar territory. Kind of almost like the woods behind the rec center at Great Neck Park. I'm in a foresty type situation, although these are all pine trees. So not quite as much shielding from the sun, but you can see how, how spotty it is, which I thought would be good to test this out and see how it does. I'm also on my Rode Wireless Go's, and I have now noticed that every single time I use them, I get static. Nothing's changed, no settings have changed, same fittings, everything is the way that it was. Doesn't matter if I'm using the A7C or this, I get static. Not exactly sure why. I think it's just sort of an indication of the beginning of the very end for those. I have already sent in like a request, a ticket request for them with Rode. That was what I did last night. I haven't heard back from them, which is fine. We'll see what they do. Uh, I mean, I basically said that the receiver barely lasts two hours now and that the transmitter barely lasts an hour and I get static. But I bought them, I think it was January 20th of 2020. So I've had them for, what, a year, almost a year and a half, and I have used them pretty much daily. So, you know, I mean, shit only lasts so long when it's got a battery in it. Unfortunately, they are not user replaceable batteries, not without great difficulty and warranty stomping disaster. So I'm certainly not gonna do that. Worst comes to worst, I have to buy new ones. In which case I would get the Rode Wireless Go 2. So for now, on the ZV-1, I'm only using the, the camera's mic with a dead cat on it. I am using the Sennheiser MKE-200 on the A7C, unless I'm using it in studio, in which case I am switching it to the already placed Movo VXR-10 because it sounds better and I don't have to do any fixes in post. And then for this, I mean, I'm still gonna use the Rode Wireless Go until it's absolutely dead. And then hopefully by then I'll get some kind of resolution from Rode. Oh man, I went to the chiropractor today. We were both shocked with the cracking of my neck. One, it felt great. Two, it was clear that it was completely messed up. And three, she was like, that's not even your usual like that was different stuff going on there. No wonder your neck hurt so bad. So at least got that fixed for now. Now I need to find the time to schedule a massage.
I'm officially bummed. That's three that are so close that if I had my 100, 400, I would have gotten the most amazing shots to date. I do believe that the next thing that I'm going to test is going to be the 24 to 70 on the A7C just so that I get some more reach when I'm filming, you know, because again, with this Insta360 1R, I don't get any zoom and that's fine. Every tool has its purpose. This is not a birding video camera or anything other than what it is. I mean, it's designed to be an action cam. It just works out pretty well for me for vlogging, provided the audio was fixed. I think we're good to go. Extendable selfie stick. I think I'll go back this way. Don't really want to walk all the way around and have to go through all that sand. Look at that. Immediately adapts. Technology, a blessing and a curse. Sometimes these things work great. Sometimes they work like crap. Oh, I think this is gonna take me out where I don't wanna go. So we're gonna cut in. Catch that? Did it show me slipping and almost falling on my ass? And back to the beginning. All right, so there you go. Just another quick follow-up test, fixing the settings on the Insta360 1R, taking it from vivid color to standard and putting it on wide instead of ultra wide so that when I fix it in Final Cut, it isn't still all weird and wonky, hopefully. All right, that's it. That's all I got for you today, kids. It's been a long day, a lot of day job stuff going on, as I told you. So if you have any comments, suggestions, leave them down below. As always, thank you for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe. And remember kids, forward and up.